Hello, and welcome to another episode of You Don't Get It. Today is the final installment of my conversation with Andrew Price and Mark Eaton on setup versus payoff. So let's get into it. Do you think there are any plot problems? A friend shows you a script. It, it has a problem. Is, is, are there any plot problems that can't be fixed with a better setup? Uh, I don't know. I mean, theoretically, anything's possible, so I'm not really sure. I mean, I think you can glean, like, I mean, let's say you've got a plot that just absolutely is not working. You know, it, it's the most exciting part is in the first third of it, and then it just kind of peters out after that. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, let's say the characters work really well, and you think, well, you know, this is a good character, that's a good character, that's a pretty good character. Here are some nice moments they might have together, and I kind mm -hmm. of appreciate the journey that this is attempting, so let's reorganize the elements and maybe reinvent a whole bunch of stuff. Um, you know, look at the hero's classic journey, look at, I mean, yeah. save the cat if you can't find anything else. Mm -hmm. But um, maybe, like, you know. maybe you take that first third and say, okay, this is actually the mm -hmm. payoff, like, this is the, this is the last third of the movie, or, I don't right. know. Right. Anyway, I'm just a huge fan of, of set and payoffs, and I'm just, mm -hmm. and I, I tend to be kind of a one note, uh, in terms of suggestions. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there's a um, YouTube um, content creator out there called I think it's Houston Productions One. Okay. If I hope I have the name right, we can put a, a thing in the comment yeah. section. Um, but he was talking about how it's um, oh let's see it's plot, it's character traits, and it's environment, and those are things that need specific setups and payoffs. Mm -hmm. um, environment, a good example would be um, the Princess Bride when they're in the right. swamp, you know, the fire yeah. swamp, and yeah. and you've got three problems of the fire swamp, you know, yeah, and, right. and uh, you know the rodents of unusual size and the fact that Wesley's going to get ambushed. Well, we've got to set up those rodents as existing, and so at one point, you know, they've they've gotten out of I think it's the lightning sand and. And he's like, no, no, we'll survive, we'll survive. And he looks up, and there's a big, huge rat staring at him. And then there's another one over there. And another one there. And he's yeah. like, yeah, we're just gonna uh, ignore <laughs> that and walk over this yeah. way. And you know, so rodents of unusual size. I don't think they exist. Bam. <laughs> so, have you uh, yeah. seen Panic Room? I'd say that's the best. I haven't actually. No. no. That's the best uh, yeah, environment setup mm -hmm. movie because the first third is just like a tour of the house. Mm -hmm. um, just detailing exactly how the panic room works, mm -hmm. what you can do, what you can't do, yep. and then the next two thirds of the movie are just yeah. letting it go. Really, any high concept movie or or real detailed specific uh, uh, film like that will will require some kind of early setup. I mean, yeah. like Inception, for example. Right. They're going to spend a lot of time talking about dreams and how they work and dream time and what the that. rules are. Yeah, uh, or Monsters Inc. You know, they spend a good 45 minutes setting up that world. Yeah, right. You know, we have to operate this world on screen. We collect the screen like this. Here's how the doors work. Yeah. You know, all that setup. You know, then when Boo enters the world, we can kind of get the story actually going a little bit. And the, uh, the bad version of Monsters, Inc. is that it's just Mike and Sully talking to each other and being like, isn't it crazy that <laughs> this is exactly how everything... But And, and we laugh. It's crazy. Like, I'll show you crazy. <laughs> I, I, you know, I've written half a dozen screenplays that do that exact thing <coughs> where it's just like we didn't get this information across okay here's a few <laughs> thinly veiled monologues at the beginning of the piece right. I've sure. done that in a lot of those that I did it's just you're just telling them all of this stuff and mm -hmm. it's like wait show me you show can't me. do that yeah. there's a phrase I love that um, a screenwriter I listen to called uh, named Craig Mason uses a lot which is turn your jokes into punchlines and your punchlines into jokes um, so, mm. like, take, take, uh, yeah, just, it, you need certain things to, like we were talking about, setups, um, but if they're not, if they're not well disguised, we see it coming, and, um, and like, at the very beginning, when you were telling, you told two jokes, mm. the first joke, the setup, and the payoff of that joke, were the setup for the next joke to get because to you couldn't have just told the priest right. joke because, to get to the other side. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, it does stand alone, but it's, I think it's funnier when it, you know, is like a series of jokes. Barely stands alone. Yeah. yeah. Or why? Why didn't the skeleton cross the road? He didn't have the guts. <sighs> <laughs> I've heard <laughs> that one. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So I. Uh, anyway. Yeah. I just like that mm -hmm. saying because then you're everything's disguised and. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, like uh, I was watching Silicon Valley recently and there's this thing that you just <clears throat> think is a joke 
Um, it's it's this it's this funny element. They're gonna they're going to film um, a vulture's nest, trying to capture this this uh, um, egg hatching, and mm-hmm. it's like okay, that's pretty boring TV because you just have a live. They're trying to show off the capacity of the camera and stuff, and it's just a shot of some eggs. Um, but then, much later on, it becomes this huge integral plot point mm-hmm. that the whole thing revolves around, and and that just surprised and delighted me yeah. mm-hmm. so much as a viewer. And, yeah, uh, yeah. If you can do that, that's that's the way to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's. I think the technical word is Chekhov's gun, is is um, something that Anton Chekhov was a famous playwright yeah. from long yeah. ago. Yes. Um, he said, if there's a gun on stage uh, in Act One, it has to be fired. Right. At some point, if if it's not going to be fired, then don't put it on stage. It has to be there for a mm-hmm. reason, kind of thing. Um, so if we see a gun, we know that that's a setup for getting fired. We want to see how it's going to be fired, though, or who's going to fire it. Um, Those are the questions that are bouncing around. Right. Mm-hmm. So how can you fire it in an unexpected way? Um, mm-hmm. If it's early in the in the show, in the worst possible way. So. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed these episodes this season. As always, I'm Christopher Johnson, your host. Have a great summer.